I'm John Rutledge, a.k.a. Eggsy from Visionary Rap Group, the GLC. Lover of mystery, disciple of intrigue. I'm Mike Bubbins, comedian and qualified PE teacher, fan of fact, seeker of proof. We're on a quest to unexplain the most unexplainable mysteries. For we are the Unexplainers. Okay, forwards, Great. forwards, Great. keep going, it's all right, I've got you. I can't see anything. It doesn't matter, it doesn't pillow, keep the pillowcase Let's on. Hold my hand. Keep the pillowcase on. Just right, move, just a little bit more, a little bit more, back a little bit. Why have I got right. a pillowcase on my head? You're okay. Why have you got a pillowcase on your head? Yes. I'm just taking you to possibly one of the hottest hotbeds of all hotbed UFO sighting action in the world. Oh. Guess where we are, Mike? Nazca Plains, Peru. Close, okay, um, but rain it in a little bit, but. but uh, uh, Roswell, New Mexico. Classic hot spot, um, but not. Exactly where we are. B bring it a little bit more UK side to where we are. Wendelsham Forest. Very good answer. Pop it off and look where we are. Take it. Ta da! Look where we are, Mike. Swansea. You've surpassed yourself. I come to Swansea every week. Yeah. My wife's from Swansea. Yeah. My mother in law lives in Swansea. Yeah. So you must know that this is, this is, listen to that. Someone's just been called off on a hot strike there. This is a hotbed of UFO action. It doesn't spell alien to me. Where's the evidence? Look, look, what's in front of us now? It's Ten feet above us yeah. on a brick plinth. Yeah. It's quite a famous Swansea landmark yeah. of the, the anti-aircraft gun which protected Swansea during the uh, the Swansea Blitz in the Second World War. That's a 94 millimeter ACAC gun. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You're spot on. But you know this is out of second lease of life. You know the reason why it's here now pointed up at the sky into the clouds? Yeah, it's a monument. Ah, is it? Or is yeah. it a secret weapon that's now been redesigned and pointed up at the sky to protect the people of Swansea? Um, right, it's, it's what's called decommission, mate. They wouldn't leave a live gun mm. in the middle of a downtown Swansea. Right? That yeah. hasn't worked since 1944, 45. Yeah. Yeah. That's a 72-year-old gun. Yeah. I mean, you're obviously thinking of the traditional, you know, these giant uh, shells that are used, and it is decommissioned from them, but they, as a pure energy gun or an energon blaster, that is aimed right up at the sky, exactly where they come down from. You know, this place has seen so many sightings. In the 60s, there were cigar-shaped objects over hospitals. Even right up to this year, things have happened. This is a hotbed, hotter than in between your legs on a summer's day after you've been for a run. It's a hot, well, it's a hotbed, mate. It's a hotbed I haven't encountered. I mean, I've been to the pubs and the clubs and the cafes and the bars yeah. and the parks and the museums and the galleries of Swansea. Mm. I mean, there's a lot of talk of discos, swimming and eating food there. What you're not doing is looking where I've been looking and where other people in the same locale have been looking for a very long time. I don't know where you're meeting these uh, like-minded individuals. Well, I use the word minded in a very broad sense. Well, that's where you're going wrong. I've been going to a place called the internet, which exists not only in Swansea, oh, but all around the world. What a surprise. Do your Some parents chums? ever tell you about the pedals of staying in your little room or just playing on the internet all day? There's nothing dangerous about communicating with like-minded fun chums. And that's what I've done. And I found a group of people who can give you so much detail about this hotbed, your face will explode and your legs will fall off and run off in fear whilst your body lies on the floor wriggling doing this. <laughs> now I finally believe him. And that won't even be your mouth speaking. We headed out to meet John's fun buddies, a.k.a. Soufon, a.k.a. the Swans UFO Network at a ULP, a.k.a. an unidentified local pub. Unidentified because the hood was back on, in case I was, John's words, a government agent. Right, Mike, come, on. come with me. Through this door okay. lies the answer. Evening, everybody. Hello. Hello. I'm John. Hello. Hello. This is Mike. Mike, welcome yeah. to Soufon. Hello, Soufon. Steve, Emlyn, I believe you two guys are uh, in charge here. Well, I wouldn't say in charge, but yes, we founded it. <laughs> OK. For the sake of Mike and the listeners, could you just tell us exactly what Soufon is? Big interest in it. I wanted to do something more practical instead of just following it on the internet or reading books. We found a venue for a first meeting, put an article in the local paper, an evening post, and um, about 45 people turned up. We couldn't believe it. Wow, well, on the first on The first, <laughs> the first night, yeah. Night. So we started compiling a database, and we're up to 440 cases now. You've also got two big ring binder folders here. I, I taught PE for 10 years, so I've never seen files of work before. I literally just have, I would have a whistle and a, and a can-do attitude. But I know there were other teachers that had these sort of things, and they, they very much looked down on me for not using them. Is this a gathering of evidence you got Yeah, we trawl through the local newspapers in the library. We look at the MOD reports. I, I have one sheet of paper for each case. But just for the listeners, they're both pretty full, and they're sort of three inches yeah. thick well, of we paper. We have 440 so. cases now. 
So we, we know that stuff is happening here in Swansea, which is, is brilliant because quite often you hear that it's, it's in you know, America or South America or parts of the world that are just impossible to access. But you don't need to go jet around the world because it's all happening in South Wales. Yeah, so can, you give, us, can you give us an example of, of, of one of the sort of more prominent cases um, that, that you guys have investigated or, or spoken right. about? Right. One particular case we're really interested in and we're tracking down as many witnesses as we can is uh, what we've termed the Night of the Triangles. Uh, the 19th of January, 19th 1983 there was dozens and dozens of sightings all on the Swansea area and indeed across South Wales on that particular evening of a uh, triangular shaped craft different sizes some the size of um, jumbo jets or football fields down to the size of a family saloon car UFO MG we'd hit gold these guys had uncovered a mass UFO sighting I hadn't been this excited about a shape in weeks better yet Natalie one of the group was a witness yeah, um, yeah, the 1983, that evening, I came out of the house. I was looking at lights, very pastely, lovely, kind of pulsating lights. It was hovering um, 40 feet above the pavement, so 10 feet above the house opposite me. So I watched it for five minutes, called the family out. My stepfather and my sister, they saw it, and a lot of neighbours on the street were looking at it too. You could hear a pin drop. It was like this silence, this stillness. It was January, it should have been cold, didn't feel the cold. That would have been sort of a year after ET came out, so were you freaked out by that then? Not as a at kid? all, actually, very, felt very comfortable. I waited for it to go, it just it disappeared, I didn't see it disappear, you know, it was a very strange kind of... Yeah, yeah. We all trying to make sense out of what we're seeing. Yeah, yeah. There is stigma, there is ridicule, oh, yeah. there is, every time, you know, you are you talk about it, if it comes up in conversation, you're ridiculed and you're like, oh, you're one of those, are you? And, I'm, and I just want answers now. Uh, a lot of people have come to us because they want to get things off their chest, treating it almost like an AA meeting, if you like, then. In fact, some of them have been almost in tears talking about it. Sometimes they've come back, sometimes they haven't, but they've gone away with that great sense of relief, so it certainly fulfilled that for them. I was used to John's flights of internet fancy, but these were sensible people, good people, policemen, teachers, animal husbandry experts. Within their company, I felt comfortable enough to reveal something I'd never revealed before. Do you know what? It was actually very, very fascinating for me. We're amongst friends now, and it was, it was described as being a bit like a, an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. Uh, I've been to one of those. I'm going to come out and say now that, oh, I saw a UFO. This, this is, uh, suddenly it's all, this is bigger than Colin and is, Barry kissing is, each other in like Eastenders. This is like a chronic irrigation for me now. I'm cleansing myself. Back in the 80s, I was at my grandmother's place in Merthyr Vale, and I saw the head of an arrow, like seven lights in the sky, above the, the opposite mountain. And I remember looking out the window thinking, what's that? And then suddenly this thing just went and it just shot in a southerly direction. So This is brilliant because Mike normally punches me in the face for talking about anything uh, like this and he's just admitted, yeah. admitted to witnessing some of the things I've always wanted to see. Oh, I, I like no, you a I bit feel, more. I feel, I feel naked, I feel vulnerable. It's, it's, welcome to the Brotherhood, Mike. Let's give Mike a big round of applause, come on. Yeah. <laughs> I'd finally ground him down. Mike was now one of us. It was time for me to extract as much new information from his experience as possible. It was time to begin probing. Wow. W-O-W. -W. Yeah. Wow. What yeah. a great meeting. What a great bunch of people. Nice, All very, very nice people. We heard the facts. Yeah. And what's blown my mind is you openly speak about being taken on board no, the ship. No, John. You have been probed. You've never mentioned this. This, to me this is why. This is why I didn't mention it to you before, right? I knew. I knew this would end badly for me, right? Did they leave scars on your body? Right, shut Did up. they leave implants? The reason that I didn't say anything in the past. Did they push like, a boiled egg inside of you to see if it would fertilize? That didn't happen, right? But I'm just saying. I saw something as a young man. I've kept it to myself for the very reason that if I knew if I said anything, you would spin it into some weird story. Of, of me having eggs pushed inside me and, and being abducted by an alien. That didn't happen. What do you and how long were you on, on the ship for? I a wasn't week? on the ship, was I? It was like Nan's front room. So the ship was like your Nan's front room? It was exactly the same as it was my Nan's front room. Insane. So they blinded you that much with their, their science. They, they recreated your Nan's front room. Listen to what I'm saying, you little bird. Yeah. I wasn't on a ship. I wasn't going to probe. There were no eggs going anywhere near me, OK? So they tried to make a clone of you in your Nan's what front you room. As a boy, which is is very interesting, but we have to stick to the facts, Mike. That please do. The facts are, I saw something which I couldn't explain. We were armed with Soufan's research and a list of reports. We needed to find a viewpoint from which we could visualise the events of that night. 
way better than the world's 189,456th tallest, but Wales' tallest building, the Swansea Meridian Tower. So right now we are at the top of the tower. That's a hell of a view. I've been coming to Swansea for 20 years, John, and that is, I've never seen this view before. So we've got pretty much a 360 degree view. We can walk around the entire top of this tower and see for miles. Because we're in basically the middle of Swansea Bay, which is a huge bay, looking north back towards the city and the hill the city's built on. And when you look out across here, you realise how densely populated a large, a large amount of this area is. Sure. Although, mate, you know, there's two sides to this. One is that it tells you that a lot of people saw the same thing on the same night back in 83. Mm. Also tells me, looking, we've got probably 100,000 people. In it. I would have thought, in more than 25 would have seen. We can chart the areas that match up with the sightings. We can find out where probably the best place to go would be from here. And I guarantee we will, within the next two hours, be on board the ship and they'll be probing us around well, the map. I certainly look forward to it. Can we cup, like a coffee first or something? Or a... Let's get a hot drink first yeah. and then... Um... I always like to have that. Before I get probed, I'll have a hot coffee first. OK, let's get a hot drink, clean ourselves out and then uh, hopefully uh, probing here we come. I wanted to take the N out of these unidentified flying objects. I sent the reports off to the Cardiff School of Engineering, hopeful they would have a floffin or flight boffin who could rationally explain these mysterious triangles. Right, John, this is called a place where science happens. Have a look around. Wow, so this is like a type of school then, I imagine, Mike. We're in a materials laboratory, yeah, and with a, obviously with an emphasis on aeronautics. There's sort of a cavalcade of, of computer screens and things at the other end of the room. Yeah. And a full-size um, airplane wing, which is pretty impressive. I don't know where they keep the rest of the plane, but this is... No uh, idea, but that certainly is the, the wing. This is good. But we call that in, the, that's known as the, the right wing. OK, as opposed to the left wing, yeah. which is the other one. It goes on the other side of the plane. Yeah, they have two, don't they? That's right. OK. Dr Ryan Marks, MEng, PhD, LCGI, AMIMECE, ARAES, a respected fluffin, had accepted the challenge. Oh, Ryan. Hi, Mike. How are you doing? Nice yeah. to thanks, meet thanks, you. Thanks, thanks for your time. Uh, I'm Dr. Ryan, nice to yeah, meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Just tell us what you do, Ryan. I'm an aerospace researcher here at Cardiff University. I mainly focus on uh, detecting damage in aerospace structures. Can I call you Ryan or Dr. Yeah. Ryan? Ryan. Okay, Ryan. Sounds good. Doctor does sound quite. Actually, I'll call you Doctor, it sounds quite good. <laughs> so, Doctor, the case study that we've been looking at, the night of the triangle in particular, 1983, January. Well, so, Doctor, when I first heard this, I was thinking a Delta Wing craft, like a like a stealth bomber. When you first emailed me and said about flying triangles, I instantly thought, this is an open shirt, this is going to be really easy. 1982, we just had the Falkland uh, War, uh, where the Vulcan bomber was used, so they were still in service, which are triangular-shaped aircraft, until I read some of the eyewitness accounts, which then left me scratching my head. Now, as far as I'm concerned, these are craft from another dimension. And he's convinced about this. I mean, there's, there's, no, there's no room for argument here. Is there any other explanation that possibly more plausible? As a scientist, the first thing we do is look at the evidence and try and draw some conclusions. So what have you noticed from any of these case studies? There's a commonality between all of them, and that is they saw some sort of flying craft. However, there are some differences. We have accounts that range in size from the size of a small family car right. all the way up to twice the size of a 747 jumbo jet. Which is massive. That's a big difference. There are some commonalities, however, between all of the uh, accounts, and that is that typically there were some lights on board this craft, but the biggest um, commonality between all of the accounts is that there was no smell and there was no sound. Any aircraft I've seen that have been made by humans make a lot of noise and they smell quite bad. They smell quite bad? Yeah, I've been close to aeroplanes and they stink. If the aircraft's making no sound, that really starts to wheedle it down to two possibilities, either a glider or some sort of lighter than aircraft. Though there are large-scale gliders, typically they're quite small and don't tend to fly at night as such. Well, the more likely situation was that it was a lighter than aircraft. You mean like a, like a hot air balloon type thing? Or an airship. Oh, OK. I have done some digging. Let's go back to 1983. Uh, during the Falklands War, uh, HMS Sheffield was actually attacked and sunk. So this gave a requirement to investigate airborne early warning uh, vehicles. Wow, wow. Okay. okay, right, yeah. A British company called Airship Industries uh, in the early 80s were developing a uh, airship called the Skyship 500. And in 1983, the Skyship 500 was actually put on trial by the British Navy, Swansea being on the coast. Uh, these were naval trials, so it's quite possible that this such craft was out in uh, the Atlantic testing early warning devices. 
Have you got any images of that, of what yes. that craft would look like? Or? So the craft would actually look something like that. Um, wow. Pretty standard sort of airship style. Well, I'll just explain that. People know what an airship looks like. Yeah. It's sort of, sort of Zeppelin-type airship, right, with the, with the fins in the back <clears> and the gondola underneath. But then what's interesting to me is above that, you've got the same ship at night with its, I assume, some sort of running lights on there. Yes. Um, those three lights there, John. Yes. You see those? Yes. Now, imagine drawing a line in your mind okay. between those one, two, three. What would you have? I mean, it's some sort of Come on. geometric image. Yeah. Yeah. Three-pointed. A three-pointed geometric shape, also known as. Do you remember school? That's remember the uh, nuns? Yes. Beating it into me. It's a triangle. It's a triangle. It's John. a triangle. It is yes. A, it's a triangle. Yes. Right. If I was in Swansea 30 years ago and I saw three lights in the sky like that, I couldn't explain that. There's no. There's no noise. It's moving slowly. I'm someone who think, describes myself as an aviation geek, and I've only ever seen one in 1983 in the dark. Mm. It's, exactly. it's 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 difficult to to, to conclude. Um, and again, it's a big craft. It's a craft of two sizes. You've got the large envelope, which does fall in line with people saying it's a large craft, but the small gondola underneath, which is lit up, which falls in line with people saying it's a small craft. But I saw something in the Welsh Valley. It would have been around that time, maybe a little later. Just, I want to interject, that's the thing you saw that you said took you on board and that's planted an egg inside of you. No, that's that the thing. tried to no. fertilise a, when, a new type of life form. No, that's when you put two and two together and made nine. That's right? what you told me in the No, car. I told you that I've seen three lights and they were moving from right to left. Could have been an issue. So it could be your scientific approach and your answer to what you believe happened. We, we, we got the fault as well, that happened. We've got, we've got an actual airship that was produced. You know, that happened. Mm. He's got actual photographs of it at night time making the exact shape of lights that I saw in the sky. Yeah. Okay, these things, that's, this is called hard research, John. This is called compelling evidence. So you call this hard research and compelling evidence? Yeah. What if I was to call it stuff and nonsense? What if they could disguise themselves to look like this, but in reality, they're something else? Have you thought about that? Entertaining that possibility, why would uh, aliens want to take the form of an airship? Surely you'd choose something a bit more of a... Like a Spitfire. Yeah, or, or, or a 747. Yeah. Like, like yes. a plane, John. 747, like a plane. yeah, okay. Or a motorbike that flies. John was on the ropes reeling from Dr. Ryan's thrusting knowledge and logical approach. But the fluffing wasn't finished. The prototype craft, which is Golf Bravo India Hotel November, uh, I believe the same craft then went on to open up the Summer Olympics in 1984. Los Angeles. Los Angeles, oh, with a big classic. Fuji film. Yes. Brilliant. And even better than that, as if this story couldn't take an even better turn, then went on to feature in the James Bond film, uh, A View to a Kill, yes. with the Zorin Industries Zorin Industries. Logo. the fight? Christopher Walken in a giant air airship, it's amazing. That is one of, yeah, one of the greatest yes. films of all time, yes. Exactly. When real life is that fascinating and that brilliant, you need nothing else, do you? I, I, you don't need aliens or little green men or abductions. I'm very excited. You've got James Bond, you've got the LA Olympics. Do you, do you think there's any room for this to actually be a craft from another dimension? Or? I can't say with 100% confidence that's this was an airship. I don't have the, the piece of writing from the military that says we were flying airships over Swansea that night, but I'm 95% confident that this is a craft of human creation, shall we say. Dr. Ryan, that was absolutely fantastic. Thank right. you so Brilliant. much. Some of the facts may be a bit iffy, but I'll go with some of what you said, <laughs> and we'll see how far we can get with, uh, with my evidence later on. Yeah. Well, I'm sure the truth is out there. See, someone's willing to learn as well, Mike. Mike had his answers and I had mine. My facts could never be proven in a lab, so I linked back up to Sufon to continue our research by looking up to the stars for more evidence. This is Swansea Common. Well, between there and the Gower, really. Pretty impressive, eh? Yeah, stunning, absolutely. I don't often feel grateful that I know you. I don't often feel that I owe you any sort of gratitude whatsoever, but well, this is one of those uh, rare moments, John, when I'm grateful to you. Uh, because the view of the night sky is absolutely something else. I mean, this is probably the clearest night of the year. But we can see thousands and thousands and thousands of stars. I can see the Milky Way quite clearly. Lots of different constellations. I can see Pleiades, I can see the Ursa Major, I can see... Uh, Twix. Yeah, that's not... Z-Tech Sport. They're not, they're not constellations. Um, um, no, Platypus. No, there's not, there's, not, there's not a Platypus one. Yeah. That's Ursa Major. You notice also the Great Bear or the Big Dipper, depending yeah. on where you live. Ryan the cat. Yeah, no, you're thinking of old Ryan, you can't see that's below yeah. the horizon. Tipex, just all across there. Tipex. The Tipex Nebula. And what's amazing about that is they named the correction fluid after that. 
Isn't that well, amazing? They named because it was so brilliantly white. They looked at it and they thought, "That's so white." Did you that's dream like that? Tipex Nebula. Look, movement. It's a plane, John. Now, how do you know it's a plane? Let's right. go through the checklist. What's a right. UFO? How do you describe a UFO? An unidentified flying object. Right. What's that? That's an identified flying object. How do you know it's identified? That's an IFO. How do you know it's identified? How well, do you know it's a plane? I've seen planes before lots of times, and that is definitely a plane. But isn't it amazing the way it hangs in the sky like that? Yeah, I mean, that's sort of how they move. And if you listen very carefully, mm. you can hear the engine. And that's proof to you that it's not a plane, is it? Yeah. On a cold, wintry common, we met up with Sufon to hunt the night skies for evidence that we are not alone. Watch your, watch your footing. And watch your footing. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Hello, Hello Sufon. Hello, nice Sufon. To see you again. This is a bit dark. I can sort of make you out. You look like a sinister cult, but hopefully no one's going to attack <laughs> us tonight. So you guys have just started. The, the watch has just begun tonight. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, what sort of things are we going to expect to see on an average sort of night out like this? Well, the obvious is going to be meteors, isn't it? And, yeah. and, and aircraft. The odd satellites? The odd satellite, yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. But you never know, we may get lucky. Yeah. What sort of stuff would we be looking for? Anything that's, that's, that's not? So what we're basically looking for, I suppose, is, is a bright light in the sky which is moving. That's the first thing we're looking for. Okay. And then we've got to rule out what it is. I mean, obviously, you've got to look to see the obvious solutions, what it is, and normally that's what it is. But, I mean, if something's moving in a straight line across the sky and then suddenly moves off at a different angle, that's really unusual, isn't it? So, so you're trying so. to basically discount things that it couldn't be first? That's right. Is there anything that you've seen in the last sort of year and a half that, that, that stood out for you? Yeah, we were down at Crofty a couple of months back, which is North Gower on the coast, and about a mile away above the hill we saw an orange light, which was stationary. It was only for about 30 Pretty seconds, easy, but definitely wasn't a helicopter, it wasn't a Chinese lantern, it was too big for a Chinese lantern. As the temperature dropped, my anticipation rose, and the light show began. Oh, like there you go, oh, there you wow. go, there. Yeah, lovely. Wow. That was a Whoa. Shooting star. Oh, that was good. No, that, no, that would have been um, some space dust burning up, in, yeah. entering our It atmosphere. definitely had a tail on it. Yeah. It just went straight across. And so it's a little particle of something that's just yeah. burned up in the atmosphere. <laughs> you know, obviously you guys have got a real passion for this. What would your ideal situation be? I mean, if something was to come out of the sky and come close, and it was some sort of craft, with a door on the front that landed and opened. In. Would you? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Without a doubt, before Without I even finished doubt. speaking. Yeah. 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 Already? I'm, quite, I, I'm, I'm pretty sick of this world anyway, to tell you the truth. But, you know, I'm saying, I, I'd, I'd like to see and experience something So else. just to try something well, new. I'm so cold, I'd probably go in there as well, though, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, there, if there was a log fire going, I'd be straight in there. The time had come to discuss Dr. Ryan's fluffing findings with our Sufan friends. I want to ask the group now, the, one of the theories that we uh, heard was uh, an aircraft engineer who said that maybe this could have been, if it was slow moving, if, it, if there was no sound, then maybe this was an airship. From what this chap was saying, that on a dark night, it's going to be obscure totally, apart from the perimeter lights, which are going to make the triangle. That triangle shape is a recurring thing with a lot of different people. Even with an airship, you get noise because of the petrol engine with it making the propellers. propellers go around. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and this had no noise at all. You know, if there were 200 witnesses, surely some of them would have turned around and said, oh, we can discount it, we know what we saw, it was a blimp. Some people could see it as being a triangle, others seeing it from different angles. One witness I spoke to, he saw a yeah, big black triangle over roughly where the Liberty Stadium is now, and he was uh, look, actually looking down on it because he was on the hill above it. And it so was he, he was looking down on the triangle? Yes, yeah, he was at a higher elevation than, than the object because right. the object was quite low. If someone's like at the same level or maybe even looking down slightly on it, if they're, if they're also seeing that same triangular shape, then that becomes a lot more... You know, I'm, I'm thinking, what can, what can that possibly be now, do you know what I mean? The night of the triangles was hard to fully explain, like maths or how a baby's made. And before we knew it, our own unexplainable event was about to unfold. What do you reckon that orange light is up there? We're looking. So where are we looking now? This, okay, so relatively low down. Yeah, what is that? In front of us, there's something like an orange light floating in the sky. Oh yeah, straight in front. So over yeah. towards Port Albert. So that's, that's definitely an, an anomaly there. Just above the horizon, where we're looking to the east, there's like an orange glowing, it looks like it's pulsing light. Yeah. You're Mike, have a look through the binoculars. So we'll have a look at that. Okay, have a look at this here. Right, so through the binoculars. What can you see, Mike? Well, it's not a star because it's, it's round. It's an orange light. There's no other, there's no green lights, no red lights, no white lights. It's, oh, it's just hanging there. It's, it's hanging through there. The, it's orange. It looks like to me, the old street lights, that's an sort of orangey light. It's, it's a 1970s street light. That's interesting. What we wanted to do is move. But they spoke too soon. 
obviously influenced by the power of our minds, the orb began to rise. It seems, it seems to have risen to me, isn't it? I right? think it's oh, risen. Yeah. Almost I'm vertically and very slowly, but it's definitely got moved up in the sky quicker than a planet would rise. If it is a planet like Jupiter, it should be getting brighter as it goes higher. But it's not, it's sort of dimmed a bit now. John, look how high that is now. So that's amazing, because what we're seeing that's here... I'm looking at it associated with a star. Yeah, it's moving left. It's moving north. Like, that's moving at quite a lot of speed. The orb flew towards us, pulsing and glowing ever brighter. As it bore down upon us, the terrible truth revealed itself. Oh, I can see it better now. It's a helicopter. Is it? But there's a red light at the back. <coughs> We've had a little mini experience there. I've seen something, and at first, I was a little bit scared. Maybe a little bit of weed did come out, but <laughs> what's quite that. nice is that through your experience, guys, and through what you know, you've managed to explain it away. Yeah. And it's quite logical what it's you've getting done. In, it's you know? getting nearer now, and there is a red light at the back. Yeah, and as it comes over, you can sort of see the flashing lights on it. So had science triumphed once again? Moreover, could I convince John that the light of reality could outshine fantasy? Nah. I'm looking up, I can see the Milky Way, I can see millions of stars, OK? Yeah. It blows my mind that that light, those photons from those stars has travelled for sometimes millions of years across Over an unimaginable tracts of space. This is the beauty of, of nature, of science. There's nothing there that can't be explained by science and, and, and by fact. But it doesn't make it any less amazing, it doesn't make it any less astounding, it doesn't make it any less magical. I think it's overwhelming to Thank know. Thank you, yes. Out there now, yes. there is a race of dogs with human faces looking down upon us. Why? I'm not saying there's not a life out there. I'm not saying there's not millions of life forms out there. I'm just saying that I don't think they were in triangular-shaped craft in Swansea in 1983, right? I'm just saying that the universe is a wonderful thing, John. The science of it. There's probably, like, a load of... a planet full of things that look like General Zod in Superman. Why do I bother? With zebra's heads, or just the faces of zebras, so not even a zebra's head. General Zod with the zebra's face. You know? Literally, does everything I say go into one ear and come out the other? There are some planets where people are just made of gas. Right, well, you stand there with your torch, mate. I'm going back in the car, OK? You can move up to the, uh, to the dog face men. Dog face men. People with, with worms instead of arms, Mike. Goodbye. Gill people who don't even swim but float through the air. Goodbye, yeah, have John. tails like fish. A peace loving planet of people made out of flowers but with human legs. Go away. An entire race of people with onions instead of eyes, Mike. I hope they abduct you. Yeah. Me too, Mike. Me too. The Unexplainers is a zipline creative production for BBC Radio Wales. It's on Earth.